Hallelujah, Jesus. Today I'm going to be ministering to you about the topic of resistance. And what I'm talking about is resisting the evil influences that are in our world today. We talk a little bit about demonic powers and so forth. And I really believe that it's something that we need in the church today. We need to know that we've got to resist. If you don't resist, you're going to get wrapped up in the tide of the world and it's going to suck you into that stream and you're going to go over the falls. Amen? You know, in the church, we talk a lot about Jesus coming back, and I believe in that. He's coming back, but we don't talk a lot about what we should be doing before he comes back. And that is, Jesus prayed this. He said, pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's our job to get God's heaven here on earth till he comes back and see our family saved, see our friends saved, see our country saved from the evil that is in it. Praise God. It's our job to do that. And if we, if we don't know how to resist evil, we're going to get sucked in to this system and we're going to become conformed to it and it's going to shipwreck our faith. Now let's take a look at this from the scriptures. Look here in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 and look at this verse. It says this, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against the rulers of this darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now notice there is a divine order here where it talks about there are demonic influences at work. Now, let me just say this. Most people in today's church, here's what they do. They go, well, I'm not going to deal with that evil. I'm going to stay away from that. And, you know, I'm not going to do much over here either. I'm just going to kind of stay in a neutral area and do nothing. You can't. As soon as you stop resisting the forces that are in this world, you're going to, uh, or as, as soon as you don't join, join sides to resist the devil, you're going to get sucked in to the trends, the ideas, the philosophy, the deceit that is in this world today, and you're going to get into trouble. Amen? Amen. Now, a question that people come up to me, they say, well, pastor, where did uh, demons come from? Well, they came from fallen angels. Write this down for a reference. In uh, the book of he uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse uh, 1 through uh, 4 there, it talks about the sons of, of God, <coughs> excuse me, that came in to the women of this earth and had offspring. Now, the phrase sons of God is used exclusively to talk about an or angels in Scripture in the Old Testament particularly. And so that's where you get these stories of Hercules and all that. In other words, before the great flood of Noah, fallen angels went in and intermingled with women and had offsprings. So when the flood came, all of their bodies were destroyed, but how many know spirits don't die from physical death? And it really, it was a, an attempt of the devil to uh, how do I put it this way? To defile the line of man to a degree where the Messiah could not come. Jesus came through, through the seed of man. And if Satan could have perverted it, he could have kept uh, Jesus from becoming flesh. Amen. So God destroyed all that generation. So all the evil spirits that we have today, they're called uh, familiar spirits. Uh, they're called unclean spirits, and they're called familiar because they become familiar with areas, trends, habits, weaknesses in people in certain areas, and they accumulate in those areas and stay there. Are you listening to me? And they're unclean because they're behind every perversion and so forth that is in this world. And so, as a Christian, I've got to constantly be on guard i got to constantly be in a state where I'm resisting the devil in my life. Amen. Resisting the temptations, resisting the out wrong ideas. Because see, Satan, you're going to find out before this is over, is really powerless when you think of in comparison to what we have. But he uses lies and deceptions to convince people and blind them to the truth to keep them in a path of destruction. And so what we got to do as Christians is we have to resist. And if you don't resist and you try to be neutral, you're going to be on his side 
and you're going to be under that influence. There's two influences, the Spirit of God and these demonic influences. And you can't go neutral because if you go neutral, you're going to come under the control of these evil spirits. It doesn't mean necessarily that you'll be demon-possessed, but it does mean that you'll be under that influence and it's going to lead to trouble in your life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now, with that in mind, I want all of us to really consider what I'm saying here today. We're at war with an evil force that is here that is unseen and it is creating within our society this current that if you just do nothing and the current will take you down the river and take you right off the falls. And the current is stronger now in this generation than in any other generation that, that I've seen up to this point. Are you listening to me? I remember 20 years ago, you would never hear a lot of profanity on TV. In fact, it was all edited out. And if there was a sex scene, it was always behind closed doors and nothing was revealed. And it was unheard of to have movies about homosexuals on TV. Completely unheard of. Didn't happen in our culture. But now you can just have your kids can be channel surfing. They can see pornography. They can see perversion. We even got commercials now with homosexuals in commercials. So it's just, it's, it's just uh, the current has become so strong now that if you stop resisting, you're going to get sucked over the falls. And I'm not talking about just passive resistance. I'm not talking about just going to church on Sunday. I'm talking about realizing that there is deceit, there is lying, there is illusions, there are fabricated things that are said all the time which are just not true at all. And a lot of Christians believe they're true now. And they're just, it's completely erroneous and untrue without any scientific backing. And see, and even the world has went so far is to get corrupted scientists that have come in there and said, no, there's some scientific evidence when most of science looks at it and says, you're nuts, you're just lying. And, and people have, have grabbed hold of stuff like that and think there's certain things true that are just not true. Now, the, the, part, the part that really grieves my spirit is this. In the church, we're, bu we're buying into it. I cannot believe all of the teaching in the church today that has been influenced by the world. The teaching is becoming conformed to the world. I'm going to preach some things to you today that you won't hear on TV. And I realize when I preach this, there's a lot of editing that's got to go on. But I don't really care about that. What I care about is you. Amen. And I care about you knowing the truth Amen. and the truth setting you free. Hallelujah. But the reality is, there's going to be a door that's going to be shut eventually when Jesus comes back. The Bible says as long as that door is open, today is the day of salvation. So right now, God will forgive you. Right now, God will cleanse you. Right now, God's not holding man's sins against them. Right now, he's not doing it. But there's a day coming when he comes for the church and raptures the church. That door will be shut. And when it's shut, it'll be too late to give your life to Jesus. It'll be too late to get things focused, right? And when I preach this, a lot of people go, what do you mean it'll be too late? Because I got a lot of people that go, Pastor, I'm not a strong Christian, but... I would never take the sign of the beast, the Antichrist. I would never worship the beast. I'd do none of that because I know I should never take the sign, of the sign of 666. See, even if people in the world know about seven years of tribulation, even people in the world know there's going to be an Antichrist. Even people know that no one will be able to buy or sell without the sign of the beast. Now, everybody's seen those movies. Everybody knows that. But there's an illusion that a lot of people don't realize. They think, all right, I know enough, I'll be okay. I don't have to commit to God right now, but I'll wait. And then if it does happen in my lifetime, I'll give my life to Jesus. 
Let me show you what the scripture says about that day. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And let's put it on the screen here. I'll show you this verse. This is the verse of what will happen after Jesus comes from the church, after the Holy Spirit is taken out of this world. Look what it says. And the coming of the lawless one is according to the workings of Satan with all power, signs, and lying ones. Now watch the next verse. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they do not receive the love of the truth. Look at that. The love of the truth. Not just love, but love of truth. That they might be saved. Keep going. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. I know you're all going to want to buy this CD, CD afterwards. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. But, but, but here's the thing. I love people and I help people with all kinds of problems. But we got to keep the word the word. We can't let the world define what the word says. We can't let it begin to affect us and go, oh, it's okay. You can go ahead and, and let your daughter bring her boyfriend home and sleep, and sleep with her in your house while you're a pet. No, 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 no. That's what I'm talking about. Or, you, you know, where, where you just kind of turn the other way and do that kind of stuff. You, you, no, 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 no. In your house, your rules, you're, you're, you're in charge. You're in charge. Oh, but pastor, that's not love. Yes, it is. Love speaks the word or speaks the word in truth. Yes. It does that. I told my kids when they were growing up, I said, if you're, you know, when you get 18 and move out or whatever, if you shack up with somebody, move in with them, you won't see me anymore. Right. I'm not going to fellowship with you. They knew it and they never did it. They got married. They've been good. Amen. Oh, you're just so harsh. So, no, I just believe that we're losing this in America. We're losing values. You don't see them in American home anymore. Did you realize we're, we're, that, that divorce is rampant in the church? You realize the average person that gets, that get, get the young person, that get, you know, meets somebody, lives with them for five, six years before they even consider marrying them? That's the norm. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. The devil's deluded people into thinking it's all right. It's not all right. We want people to get saved. We want people to come to Jesus. Years ago, the Lord said this to me. He said, I want you to relook some of these verses. And I said, what do you mean? He said, in, a, in, a, in the book of Revelation, it says that, that I've asked the church to, to return to its first love. He said, how can you return to something that you don't have? So what do you mean you don't have? He said, well, no. Not everybody that calls on my name has experienced my first love. And you can't return to something you never experienced. So I begin to realize, boy, there are people in church. I talk about the love of God, God forgiving me and all this stuff. New birth. And they've never even experienced it. And I'm telling them to act like I'm acting when they haven't even got the, the basis to do it. Well, we'll just progressively move them into the church. Progressively, they'll get good enough to be Christians. No. It only happens when you give your life totally to Christ. That's when it happens. I like what Jesus said at the end of the age. He said, many will say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I did miracles in your name. And Jesus will say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And then he describes those people and says, the people that continually hear my word and don't do it are like those that built their house on the sand. But those that continually hear my word, notice continually hear, I'm putting that in the Greek there, continually hear my word and do it are those built on a rock. And when the storms come, they will not, they'll be okay. So here's what he said. There's two groups of people that die. Doers of the word and those that don't do. And those that don't do, he doesn't know. Those that do do, he knows. Amen. Amen. That's true. Did you know at the judgment seat of Christ, there's not one person that appears there that hasn't done something for God? There's no one up there that says, oh, I didn't get involved in church. I didn't do anything. I just, oh, I went to church maybe three or four times a year, whatever, but you know, I, I wouldn't, and there's no one there at the judgment seat of Christ in that state. Everybody's judged for their works in the ministry 
at the judgment seat of Christ. Wow. It shouldn't be getting this quiet. Because <laughs> we're not preaching on church people here. We're preaching to church people. There's some that are in church, but church people. Praise God. Let me show you how Jesus preached to people to prepare them to believe on him for the resurrection. Luke, t- put up the, the, the verse, Luke. Here's how Jesus preached to people. Now, great melted went from, with him, turned and said to them, here's Jesus, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father or love his father less and his mother less and his wife less and his children less and his brothers less and sisters less than me, in his own life, less also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, why would the Lord say that? Because in his culture, here's what, here's, what, here's what went on. When Jesus started preaching, the religious leaders got so upset, they told everybody, if you follow that Jesus of Nazareth, we're kicking you out of the synagogue. If you get kicked out of the synagogues, you're going, to be, you're going to be isolated from all your brethren and all that stuff. And we even see it today. There's religions that if you change the religion of your family, go to another one, they will not only kick you out of your family, but they'll kill you. They'll kill you. And so Jesus said, listen, if you're going to be a disciple of mine, you're going to have to place my word above every human thing in your life that you love the nearest and the dearest, including your own self. In other words, I'm going to have to be on the top rung for you to be my disciple. What does it mean to say, I believe that Jesus is Lord? What does that mean exactly? That Jesus is Lord. See, we got a Western mind. We don't understand what it means. It doesn't just mean that he's Lord. It means that you believe that he is Lord over every aspect of your life. So if I don't, if I say, Lord, I want to do this, even though you don't tell me not to do it, but I still believe that you're Lord, I'm lying. Jesus said, he said, don't call me Lord Unless you do what I say. Isn't that right? And and, and I believe this is the reason why at Pentecost, when people saw Jesus died for their sins, there was a great revival, and it was a revival that changed people. Because they understood what it meant to say Jesus is Lord. They understood that. And, and, and they had already been preached to by Jesus who made it very clear what sin was and what it wasn't because in religion, sin was always outward. Don't kill anybody physically. Jesus said, oh, no, 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 no. Sin starts with anger. Or religion say, you know, uh, adultery is outward. She says, oh, no, 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 it doesn't start there. It starts with your heart. And I heard a religious leader say this. He said, well, as long as you just think about something that is wrong, as long as you don't act on it, it's okay. What? We're to do the word from our heart. From our heart. As believers. I know sinners that do things outwardly. I'm to do it from my heart. I, I'm not going to commit adultery on my life, wife hourly, but I don't want to do it in my mind. Because in God's side, it's just as bad doing it with my mind as it is doing hourly. Amen. Amen. Isn't this good message? Yes. Come on, we're preaching a little prosperity here. Come on, just got to get this going here. <laughs> but see, I'm sharing this with you this morning because. There's this great illusion in the world that's coming into the church. 
Preachers are, are falling under the influence of this stuff. And it's coming out of the pulpit. They're afraid to say anything that's not uh, politically correct. And they got all this stuff happening. And after a while, people keep hearing it. Go, it must be true. It must be here. I keep hearing it. 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 When it was a lie from the very beginning. And it's our job as ministers to preach the truth to the people so that they'll go back to the Bible. Because if we don't have this Bible, what do we got? Humanism. The Bible's not humanism. These are God's thoughts. We can't throw God's thoughts away. This is the way that we live. This is the way we see victory. This is the way you have power over the devil. You're not going to get power over the devil without that. The Bible said if you submit to God, then you can resist the devil and he'll flee. But if I'm not submitting to God through the word, that's going to affect my authority that I have in Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I need that authority. So I'm to manage it. You're to manage it in your home. You're to manage it in your career. You're to manage your life by that authority that was given to you in Christ. You don't got to be scared of the devil. No movie's going to be a threat to you. You can deal with it. Amen? Church, there's power in this. But the world has given us the illusion of which is not true. It's a lie. It's a lie. Bring as many witches to church as you want. Come on. Bring a whole hive of them. Or whatever they call them. What do they call them? Put them all up front here. Give them my chair. They can touch my stuff. They have no power over the name of Jesus. Nothing. Nothing. Join us at the River on Wednesdays and Sundays for weekly services, as well as great programs for kids, youth, and young adults. Visit riveroflifefellowship.org to view our calendar of events. There's something for everyone at the River, where family matters.